one, two, three, four. The road we choose leads us to our destination, built upon the photographs and memories shared along the way. For us, this road never ends, for the destination is the road, where we journey to find the joy in every day, to follow our passions, to connect with nature, to be humbled. I think you know so much about a place from a book or a conversation or whatever, but not until you get down in the water, in the forest, on the riverbank, that reveals what you have and what you have to lose. Because without that knowledge of that place and that moment in time, you can't know what there is to protect. To tell our story, we've put together a crew comprised of a geologist, an ecologist, fishing guides, and all around like-minded friends. Together we'll set off into the remote backcountry of the beautiful Canadian Rockies of Alberta. We are on a mission to find three indicator species of a freshwater ecosystem. The pure strain Westlip cutthroat, the bull trout, and the American dipper bird. Three, two, one. Boom! Oh my god. That thing is intense. The first leg of our journey is Landslide Lake. This beautiful section of the Canadian Rockies has many glacial lakes, but thanks to our heli guide, Ralph at Rockies Heli, and his vast knowledge of the area, he's positive we'll find what we're after here. The beginning of every trip is always so exciting. Setting up camp, unpacking the gear, eating too many of the snacks that you meant to last the whole trip. The anxiety builds as you just want to get outside and explore. On a really basic level, if you're even driving in a car or hiking by a river, and you see the trees and the plants growing right at the water's edge, that pretty much tells you that that river isn't dammed upstream, isn't being impacted. Its flow is more or less natural. And that really sets the stage for some really cool insects and fishes that will really let you know quickly whether or not you're in a healthy system. As evening sets in, we're all hypnotized, cast in a euphoric state of mind, thankful to be alive and surrounded by so much beauty. It's pretty hard not to get lost in these evenings with the high mountain air, a blazing fire, and good people. It's an escape from the crazy every day and the immersion into nature that we were seeking. It's truly humbling. 
Yeah, so this is a western slope cutthroat. One of the big things right now that conservation biologists in the region are thinking about is the genetic constitution of this fish. And when I say genetic constitution, what I mean is that these systems have been have experienced hybridization with rainbow trout and other species of of, tr of, of trout. So one of the issues is, is that the western slope cutthroat easily hybridizes with other species of fish. Something that is in discussion right now is, you know, if this fish has 80% pure genes, should we consider it a threatened and unique and rare species, being a western slope cutthroat? Or is that 80% maybe suggest that it's not pure enough? So then it comes the question of a baseline. How do we hope to preserve this species? Do we hope to you know, eradicate anything that might not be pure stock, or we want to set some standard. This is a really great way to cause a lot of damage. And just it, it blows my mind, you know, if you like spending time outside, respect it because look at all this junk, you know? It's not gonna go away by itself. Following our success at Landslide, we were off to fish the beautiful Ram River. It's nestled deep in the Alberta foothills. We will quickly learn how beautiful this place truly is. Doesn't it say Ram Falls on there? It must. It has to. So yeah, so we just caught a pretty small fish. It's a western slope cup goat. You can see he's still got his par mark, so he's pretty young. It just makes you feel like you're in a really special place when you see fish that are healthy and obviously doing quite well in this really remote stretch of the, the Ram River. Pretty stoked. Yeah, I mean, it looks like a pure strain to me. It looked pretty unique in this river system, too. Big dots and kind of dark, silvery sides. Look at the old nail polish. It's coming on the dirt. The, it's called the reverse French manicure. I wear it all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get a kiss. Lots. All right. All right, good luck. Have fun. Thanks. It didn't take long before we were all lost in the moment. Everyone enjoying the world their own way. These are the moments we live for. The moments we came to find to escape it all and exist in the now. Nothing like a little bit of rain to start the morning. Well, what do you guys want to do? Like, you're gonna make me coffee? I'm gonna make you water for your coffee. But Meg. But Charles. Yesterday, we got dropped off by the helicopter and I found a rock just full of fossils. It just puts in perspective how lucky I am to be able to look back into the past. That's what keeps me going. That's why I like to view this world with a, a different lens. For everything that we believe. Next, we are going deeper into Alberta. We're headed for a remote corner 
in Banff National Park. Stoked that we locked in on the Westlip Cutthroat and excited for more. I always try to slow time down. Whether it was to turn everything off and just stare at the sky. Or to hike deep into the woods, find a beautiful vista, and breathe in the fresh air. This life is so polluted with noise and endless expectation. There's a constant pressure to acquire more. For me, it's crucial to be outside in places like these. It gives me a chance to recalibrate and gain a fresh perspective. These places are inspiration for life. And fuel for the soul. These places are my freedom. With the heli getting us as far as it was allowed to go and having five miles to trek, we thought it wise to call a few good friends and local Southern Alberta fishing guides to help pack in the extra gear needed to explore the area. From here, we are headed towards an isolated cabin tucked deep at the edge of the park. It sits at the foot of some of the most breathtaking views these mountains have to offer. That's probably one of the things I love most about fishing is that it's just thick with nostalgia. It doesn't even matter if I'm walking down the street to fish up my local river, you know, if we're heading out, you know, 100 miles in the backcountry. Every time I'm out there, all I do is think about my dad. I mean, his ashes are scattered throughout these waters. When we're there fishing, that's that's all I think about. I mean, every time I, I catch a fish, you know, I can't help but look up and say, thanks, Dad. I would feel nothing short of it being my responsibility to help pass that on, to take care of these places and to keep them exactly the way they need to be, which is untouched. He's always on my mind. Show me the money, honey. You don't know what you have to lose until you know what you have in the first place. We could do this hike in five years and you might spend a day and not see a dipper or coming back here and not seeing young cutthroat in the streams would maybe be an indication that something serious has happened. Yeah. So it's that notion of knowing what you have will help you be a better steward because you know what, what there is to protect. You have all these kind of, these organisms and environmental kind of cues, if you will, that help us contextualize our journey. Because it's not just coming to this lake to go fish. It's developing a deeper understanding of Alberta and your backyard and these places that you revere and cherish. 
but you may come back in 20 years and those glaciers could be gone. And then you think about what's the impermanence of these lakes. I think we're all gonna walk away from this experience having a deeper understanding of these places we love and and, and deeper understanding of how our planet's changing. Our time in Banff really opened our eyes to the bigger picture. We have a mission to seek out pristine ecosystems. But as most adventures do, they take hold and teach us much, much more if we are there to listen. As we head back, I can sense change. The longer we spend in these places, the more they speak to us. It's the understanding of what we really have out here that we will take with us forever. Lord knows we were good men to the end. So the story goes, search for gold. We are headed south to meet up with our friends at Panther River Outfitters. Our final track will be on horseback as we ride up the Panther River Valley towards high camp, a small outpost resting at the base of the mountains. It's been a dream for many of us, and it won't soon be forgotten. We waste no time in our new playground. The bull trout are plentiful, but small. While hoping a monster shows his face, signs of the American Dipper steal the show. I saw a pair, and I'm looking at this, this cliffside, yeah. and my years of experience studying this bird tells me this is where they'd be nesting. You can look down and look for their poop. You know, follow the crumb trail. Boom. And there's the nest. It tells me that this area is relatively pristine. You know, it tells me that um, it's, it's, anytime you have a top predator, whether it's a wolf, a lion in Africa, or an owl, you that top predator, its presence indicates that the bottom of that food food pyramid, that food web, is, is relatively intact. So, I mean, one of the amazing things is that we've been riding through this landscape, and you know we're looking for pools and we're looking for good bull trout habitat. But the one thing you can see from afar is that little dipper, you know, flying close to the water upstream. And dippers and trout pretty much have the same diet, you know, stoneflies, mayflies, caddisflies. So from afar, a great way to, you know, indicate that there might be trout there is if you see that dipper. Because the dipper is telling you there's good food, there's good habitat, and more than likely there's a trout. So yeah. what better way to sight fish from a horse, you yeah, know, exactly. horse's back, so. Yes, exactly. <laughs> good fun, brother. Oh, awesome. it's so good. <laughs> We were still in search of that monster bull trout, the last of our species on the list. The truth, however, was as long as we were in this beautiful place with friends, nothing else mattered. In my attempt to snag a shot, I managed to fly a drone into a tree. Ah! Oh, come on! Ah! Ah! Awesome! The following day was our last chance to find that monster bull trout, and it just so happened, we did.
Find something that you've never heard of. Find something that nobody's ever told you about. And then open up a map and just get there. And that in itself could be possibly one of the greatest adventures of your life. This journey has shaped us all. It was remarkable to see the world through another lens, not to mention get outside with good people. I know we will have many more adventures, but it just so happens that this one will set the bar for them all. Everything that we 